Firstly, welcome to New Zealand, Holly Humberstone. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm, yeah, gassed. First time in New Zealand, what are your initial thoughts? I know it's a bit of a fleeting trip, but have you had a chance to look at anything? I haven't. I've heard amazing things about New Zealand and I've, I've wanted to come. Yeah, I think I was, I was just saying, I think it's a lot of people's like once in a lifetime kind of bucket list things to come to New Zealand. So really excited to be here. But we landed last night and I just went straight to bed. Um, and I've really only seen this hotel, but um, I'm going to get out after this interview and go and have a little explore, maybe get some food. The park looks amazing. Apparently there's all these trees that you guys just let go through the pavement and stuff. And yeah, I'm just excited to have an explore. And I know you're a massive fan of The Lord of the Rings. Yes. Unfortunately, don't have the chance to go to Hobbit on this time, but what is it that drew you into The Lord of the Rings? I've honestly got no idea. I've always been like a bit of a weird, freaky nerd for like Harry Potter and stuff like that. And just like fantasy stories. I don't really know why. I think it's just like being able to like switch off and stuff. But yeah, me and my, my older sister who I live with in London, we like, it's, it's our like little safe space. Like watching Lord of the Rings, it just makes everything better. Um, so yeah, I'm good that I can't, I can't go and visit, but I think my sister Ellie would have been fuming if I'd have gone without her. So I think I've got to wait until I've got enough money to bring us both over and we can go together. But um, I don't know what it is about it. It just sets my soul on fire. I feel like it's such an escape from reality. And with everything that's going on in the world, I guess like post pandemic, we don't need to talk about that. Everybody's sick of talking about that. Mm. Um, but it is an incredible escape from whatever is going on in the real world. Yeah, I think that, that is it. And I think, I think, yeah, I went back up home um, where I grew up with my parents for um, like for lockdown and stuff with my, like my whole family went back. And I think my sister and I watched Lord of the Rings, like the whole thing, like all the Hobbits, all of the Lord of the Rings maybe like three or four times like yeah it's the best it's just ultimate comfort and I did watch an interview that you have done recently where you were talking about going home for lockdown and you were sitting at the piano that you learned to play piano on mm -hmm. and you were writing how was that experience being back in like home surroundings with the people you love the most just yeah. I guess taking a break because your life is hectic you're here there and everywhere at the moment yeah I mean it was really strange taking a break but yeah, I got some stuff done as the months went on. I got some writing done, but I honestly found it really, really hard to be kind of inspired and stuff. I think just because, you know, I, I write a lot about my social life and my kind of experiences and my relationships with people. And obviously I wasn't able to like see my friends or like get out and do stuff. So I found like that writing just kind of came to a stop altogether, like after a while. Um, and yeah, I don't know, that was really, really strange because it's always been something that I've loved to do and that I haven't really had to think too much about d doing and wanting to do it, you know? But um, yeah, I think after a while, I kind of took the pressure off myself a little bit and started to do it again as a hobby and things like that. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm usually so busy and chaotic and I've got so much to write about because I've got so much going on, but it was just really, I found it really tough actually to, to like be able to, like be inspired and motivated to do it. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be back and busy and I've got so much to write about now when I go home. Um, yeah, probably just how cool New Zealand is, how cool <laughs> you guys are. <laughs> write a song inspired by the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, for sure, it'd be interesting. <laughs> it'd be so good. Yeah. And you're currently working on your debut album, yes. which is exciting. How far through the process of creating the album are you? Um, So I'm honestly not really sure. Like <laughs> I've got a lot of, a lot of songs that I really love, I kind of was working on kind of last year and the start of this year, but I've, I've really been on tour for like, as long as I can remember now, which has been so fun. And I've, I'm really, really lucky to be able to travel and I've enjoyed it so much. Um, but it just has meant I haven't really had any mental kind of space to fit writing in or, or time, to be honest. Um, so yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm going home tomorrow and that's it, like I'm done for touring for the next few months. And then I've just got, yeah, some time to think about an album and stuff and put it together. I'm a bit anxious about it because I feel like a, there are so many of my favorite artists that have had like a really, really iconic, like amazing, like the best album is the debut album, you know? So I don't want to rush it. I just kind of want to just take my time with it. And I'd rather just be really, end up with something really that I'm really, really proud of, even if it takes me like a little bit longer. 
Um, but yeah, who knows? I'm trying not to overthink it and just have fun with it. Well, I have no doubt in my mind that it's going to be an amazing album. And patience is a virtue. So everybody just, you know, chill out, be patient. The album is coming when it's ready, yeah. which is an exciting time. You were also on tour recently with Olivia Rodrigo in America and Canada. Did you get the chance to hang out with her? Did you guys talk about music at all? Yeah, um, she's absolutely lovely. I think just as you'd expect her to be, you know. Um, but yeah, she was so fun. I, I had two kind of back-to-back tours with I started off with Girl in Red which I'm a huge fan of she's yeah. so amazing and then yeah I did Coachella and then Olivia um, and it was just really fun like I, I have a really really small kind of um, yeah team and it was honestly just really really lovely to be able to hang out with another kind of youngish kind of girl that is kind of going through all of this and getting used to touring just for the first time, like like myself, you know, I've never really done much of it before. So, and I think she's in, she was in the same boat. So it was really, really nice to, yeah, just kind of to have a friend on tour as well. And I feel like that must be one of the most wild things because there aren't that many people in the world who get to experience what you and Olivia are experiencing. So the fact that you can kind of relate to each other's journeys and I guess talk, each, talk to each other about those crazy things that you experience that mm -hmm. there aren't actually that many people in the world who are able to do that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, she, she must be feeling it way more intensely as well just because she's, she's so young and she's like, just crazy, crazy, like, just famous. And I think that must be really strange for her as well. She's 19. I, I think I was still probably playing with Bratz dolls when I was 19, <laughs> yeah, to be honest. Me too. So she's had to grow up really fast, I think. Um, so I can't imagine what that's been like for her. But for me, it's just really been nice to have somebody that I can go to for advice or just, yeah, have a, just like a friend to hang out with and talk about stuff that isn't music as yeah. well. And you were saying that you're a little bit nervous about the album because a lot of artists do have that first album that's very iconic. Yeah. Olivia Rodrigo Sawa being one of those albums. Exactly. Did you guys talk at all about like any metho methods or anything like behind what she did and maybe anything that you could potentially apply to your first record? Yeah, actually, she gave me some really, really good advice, which I hadn't really thought of. Um, she says that she journals quite a lot um, and just writes about just her feelings and writes them down. I feel like I'm a bit more of a suppress, suppress, don't think about it. And then it all comes out in the, in the writing session. Um, but yeah, I've started to journal a little bit more because I think that was something that she said kind of helped her. Um, yeah, and it, it, I think it is starting to kind of help just jotting things down. So if I'm feeling a certain way when I'm away on tour and I don't have, you know, like time to write or a guitar around, then I've got that to come back to later. Um, but yeah, I think I'm also just, I feel like it, it's probably really, really helpful to just kind of have somewhere to kind of vent um, and yeah, just kind of put all my feelings down in one place. But yeah, she definitely helped with that for sure. And it's also an amazing thing like with journaling, I can't say I do it too often, but sometimes if I'm feeling a particular way, I'll just like get a little notepad out and write some thoughts down. Mm -hmm. It's quite nice being able to express how you're feeling and know that nobody ever has to see that if you don't want them to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I can pick out the bits that I want to actually put in a song. Um, but yeah, for me, to be honest, like I, I hadn't really journaled a lot and it's not really part of kind of my like bedtime kind of routine. I just kind of forget. Um, and then when I get a time to write and I go into the studio, that's always been kind of my, like writing songs is basically my form, had been my form of journaling, I guess. And then my chance to kind of get all of my feelings out. And yeah, I think sometimes it can be a little bit scary to share, like, yeah, you know, my, my feelings kind of with, with so many people and stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't know, there's something kind of empowering about it and just being kind of unfiltered and really, really honest and vulnerable within the writing. Cause yeah, I'm not really writing about like particularly like crazy stuff. I'm just writing about like really normal things, universal stuff that most people can can relate to. That's one of the things that I love the most about your music. It is super personal to you and you can hear the emotion through the lyrics and through the sonics of the songs, but they are also relatable. Like you've written a song about a particular experience that you've had in your life. I am all the way over here in New Zealand and I'm listening to that song and I'm like, oh, that reminds me of the time where 
I fell in love with this person and then I didn't really know what was going on and then it was a difficult time or whatnot. And I think that's one of the most beautiful and most empowering things about music, the fact that, and also like you've just been to Japan. For a lot of those people, they probably don't speak English or English mm -hmm. would be their second language. And the fact that they're all there singing along to your songs that have had like an emotional impact on them when they might not necessarily even completely understand the lyrics. Yeah. That must be a power powerful thing for you to witness. Yeah, for sure. Actually, I, I think that's the cool thing about, about music. It can, I can be writing about one situation or something that's going on in my life and it can mean something totally different to somebody else. Um, yeah, it's, it's just been really lovely to get kind of messages and stuff on social media from people who, like, I don't know if I have much in common with, you know, who live so far away from me and have a completely different life and they still kind of connect to the story and just, I guess, find a way to, for the song to, to kind of mean something to them and their situation. But yeah, I, I actually spoke to somebody in Japan. We had to have a translator because obviously I can't speak Japanese. Yeah. Um, and like, she asked me like what the story behind one of my songs was. It was The Walls Are Way Too Thin. And she, she had a completely different idea of like what, what I was talking about in her head than what it was actually about. And yeah. she was like, well, it's really cool to know what it's actually about. It's, it's helped me so much with, you know, what I was going through, even though she couldn't understand what it was saying. So yeah, it's just cool. I just think music, it doesn't really matter what, what language you speak. It, it kind of can just be, be there and mean something else to you, you know? 100%. And speaking of Walls Too Thin, you've released an alternative version of it. Mm -hmm. Are you planning on releasing any alternative versions of any of your other songs? I am, yeah. I, I'd really like to. I think also because I'm not really sure when the album's coming. And I, I, I still really care about a lot of the songs that I've released. Um, and I kind of wanted to give them kind of a new kind of lease of life, you know? Um, and yeah, I did the vanilla, I did, I think I did for the first EP, I, I did like um, a stripped back version of vanilla just in my house. And people seem to just kind of like hearing it in a different way. And yeah, I'm sort of, I'm working on putting a few of the other songs, like maybe Scarlet, um, yeah, Walls, what else? There are a few other ones that I kind of want to strip back, Sleep Tight as well. Um, and yeah, maybe put those out sometime soon, I hope. Awesome. It's just fun, fun to like recreate them as well. And the other thing that I think is super cool, like you write a song when you're feeling a particular way and as time goes on, I guess the meaning of that song would change to you. So the fact that you can give it another life in a different sounding way, I think is super awesome as well. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's strange that it can also be kind of nice for me to listen back to the songs and kind of be transported back into like that kind of period of my life and things, but yeah, they mean different things to me now. And I feel like I'm a different person to who I was when I wrote a lot of those songs now, but they still are kind of, yeah, really like just important for me and a little reminders, you know, when I look back and listen to them. So yeah, it's been really fun actually starting to kind of create different versions. Awesome. And tonight is your first ever show in New Zealand. How are you feeling? I'm so excited, honestly, I can't wait. People are just so lovely, like over on this side of the world and um, no shade on, on it, UK, but I just kind of don't really, I don't know how it's gonna be going back. I feel like it'll bring me back down to earth, but like, yeah, people are just so nice over here. And um, I don't know, I think maybe it's a little bit to do with me as well. I'm just so excited to be here finally, because, you know, I've been connecting with people online and stuff and, over social media just for so long now and I've just wanted to come over um, and play for you guys and hopefully people feel the same as well. Um, I guess if they bought a ticket then they must be like, <laughs> she, yeah, she's all right. 100%. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's just, it's just like, it's been such a good vibe so far because I'm, I'm just so excited to be here and I just, I'm trying to make the most out of it and just make up for lost time a little bit, but yeah. And when you're playing one of the most amazing venues, the Tuning Fork, it's super intimate. Like, I honestly love it as a venue because you're there and you get drawn into the artist that's performing's world because it's a small venue, you're super close, everybody's having a good time and I know the fans are gonna go crazy tonight. Oh my gosh, I hope so. Yeah, I've, I've heard amazing things about the venue. Obviously I've never, I've never been there myself, but I guess I'll, I'll 
discover it <laughs> in a few hours yeah. and yeah I think I'm, I'm I perform on my own as well I'm like I have like a solo set um at the moment so I think that would be kind of a nice vibe in a little small room um just finally get to connect with people on on like that kind of level Hell yeah, I am looking forward to that 100%. I did see a video the other day when you were in Japan, you hadn't planned an encore, but the fans yeah. were like going crazy and you ended up doing an encore. For the fans in New Zealand, how can we get you to do an encore tonight? Well, actually it was different in Japan because it's, I think it, because of COVID, it was illegal to cheer and it's illegal. What? Yeah. I think so. This is what I'd been told. It's illegal to like cheer or to sing along. And I just, I didn't do an encore. I played everything all at once where I'd usually have gone off to like do the encore thing, the classic really cringy encore thing. <laughs> um, I just stayed on. And then when I went off, they, they were obviously a few of them were breaking a few laws because <laughs> they were like, come back. And I was like, well, I've already played my encore. Um, so I had to dig one out from, from the archives, but I'll definitely be doing one tonight. It's always a bit cringy. A girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. the fun. Totally, yeah. 100%. Honestly, it's been so incredible catching up with you. Cannot wait for the show tonight. Thank you so much for coming to New Zealand and make sure you come back soon so we can go to Hobbiton. Oh my gosh, 100%. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much for having me. I can't wait for tonight. No, I'm not just gonna